What is up, wrestling fans? Welcome to another pay per view point. This is the fifth one over the past week. My God. This is another edition of the Smart Out Moment Smack Talk podcast. I'm your host, as always, Tony Mango. Joining me, as always, are Robert D. Felice. Hello. And Callum Wiggins. When worlds collide, it's a curious thing that you've <laughs> never heard a robot and a caveman sing. Oh, man. I thought, that was, I, that. I, thought, I thought that was fitting because of the uh, Super Bowl, and apparently they're doing the SpongeBob song for that. I am so confused. What in the hell is this a reference to? That's a SpongeBob reference, Tony. We're 90s kids. Uh, yeah. Okay, yeah. I've seen maybe one full episode of SpongeBob in my life. Was it this one? Nope. <laughs> it definitely wasn't that one. To be fair, SpongeBob is sometimes better booked than WWE. Something about like a squirrel in an astronaut suit doing something. Yeah, know. that's one of the main characters. Oh, sorry. Well, that goes to show how much I know about SpongeBob. Then. If you donate to the Patreon, we'll watch a SpongeBob season with Tony. If you uh, do the tier that you can request the feature, we'll do a, uh, a fan ounce table of an episode of SpongeBob, and I'll just be like, what the fuck? And we'll, we'll put that on Fanboys or something. Uh, so, speaking of uh, kind of providing ideas for the show uh guest five had tossed out a suggestion and i almost did it where where we would start this off with somewhere in the middle of it and then we would go towards the beginning and then the end and kind of bounce around the way that they did this tournament but i kind of figured that nobody would understand it because i don't think that anybody really watched this tournament (laughs) and i don't blame them because this was a clusterfuck this worlds collide thing is something that was a very, very cool concept, and it was something that I was a really big fan of, and they managed to fuck it up royalty, uh, royally, not royalty. Uh, in, in a sense, this is what it was, just to give you everybody a breakdown of what in the hell we're even talking about here, because I'm sure the majority of people are just like, what is with the Worlds Collide thing? So they did Royal Rumble Access, and instead of just having a bunch of random matches, they did a taping for NXT UK. They did a bunch of dark matches, which may or may not air for NXT UK because currently they said that they were supposed to uh, record three episodes of NXT UK, and I'm pretty sure that there was only like five matches, so that can't possibly be the case. And on top of that, they also decided to add a tournament where it was 15 men from... NXT, NXT UK, and 205 Live, five per section that would compete in a battle royal. And the winner of the battle royal would get a buy for the first round of a tournament, which would pair off these different brands. And eventually a winner would be declared and the winner would get a title shot of his choosing for any of the three brands. So that's essentially you could do the NXT Championship, the NXT North American Championship, the NXT Tag Team Championship, technically speaking, the NXT UK Tag Team Championship, the United Kingdom Championship, or the Cruiserweight Championship, because, you know, you're not going to have, like, a uh, Umberto Carrillo fighting uh, Tony Storm for the NXT UK Women's Championship. It's just not going to work. So they did this, and over the course of those couple of days where they were recording Royal Rumble Access, there were conflicting reports on what had happened. And I had to go back eventually and change what the spoilers were because for some reason people got Trent Seven and Tyler Bate mixed up. People just thought that uh, Dijakovic and uh, Keith Lee were in a match and then it didn't happen and it didn't happen because they weren't in a match. All these other kind of conflicting things. Well, I thought that that was going to be the end of it and that everything would be all cleared up and that we would just get smooth sailing for when they aired it. Instead, they did a split airing where at 12 p.m. they did the first round of the tournament, except for one of the matches. And then they did the second round of the tournament, except for one of the matches. And then they waited until 8 o'clock to do the Battle Royal that started things off, that dictated what the bracket seeding was for the first round. And then they skipped back over and did the one missing match and then the other missing match, and then went through to the semifinals and the finals. So this is going to sound like we're going and jumping all over the place here, and it's not our fault. This is actually technically what happened. And I'm just going to read the results, and then we're going to do like a very generalized uh, breakdown because we're not going to have too much to say about individual matches. So 
We started off in the first round, technically round two, sort of, where Drew Gulak defeated Mark Andrews. Then Keith Lee defeated Travis Banks. Adam Cole defeated Shane Thorne. Dominic Dijakovic, who they pronounced as Dijakovic this time. So now we've gotten Dijakovic, 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 and Dijakovic. Still not sure what the fuck it is. Same with Cesar Bononi and all that other kind of stuff. Another first round match was Tyler Bate beating Cedric Alexander. Another one was Velveteen Dream beating Tony Nice. And then we had the blank space of who's going to win between Zach Gibson and Humberto Carrillo. And they said, fuck it. Uh, Adam Cole beats Keith Lee in the quarterfinals. Tyler Bate beats Dominic Dijakovic in the quarterfinals. And then Umberto Carrillo pops up. And if you are totally fucking confused, it's because they skipped the Zach Gibson match. So now you know already that Carrillo beats Gibson. And of course, Carrillo loses to Velveteen Dream. And you are missing the other quarterfinals match because fuck it, we don't need to do Jordan Devlin versus Drew Gulak. 8 o'clock comes around, we do the qualifying battle royal to find out who gets eliminated to set up the things that we just already saw. And I will nitpick something about that in a little bit, but Jordan Devlin wins. Then we go back to the first round, and it's Humberto Carrillo beating Zach Gibson. Spoiler alert if you didn't watch the fucking first two hours. (laughs) Then Drew Gulak loses to Jordan Devlin, and we are in the semifinals. Tyler Bate beats Adam Cole. Velveteen Dream beats Jordan Devlin. Finally in the finals, Velveteen Dream wins by pinfall, and he wins the entire tournament. So let's backtrack here and just talk about how this disorganization boggles the mind. What the fuck? <laughs> well, clearly they don't care. I, I, yeah. They they planned this, too. That's the thing, because Charlie Caruso is there in a pre-taped thing talking about, we're going to go and talk about this one match, and then here's a bunch of... So this was a plan. Yeah. It's fucking weird. I I feel like I should be more upset with it than I actually am. Because realistically i don't really give that much of a fuck the only one i'm upset about in any respect is the zach gibson him versus Korea one because we saw Korea had already made it to the second round in the previous hour so that one was the one that made the least amount of sense to me i can understand why they would put the other quarterfinal match on afterwards just because of time constraints or anything along those lines or just to if they were going to show the battle royal to emphasize the fact that okay jordan devlin won the battle royal and this is his advantage and then you go straight into his match that that would make a reasonable amount of sense to me. The other one just doesn't make any sense at all. Yeah, like, if they would have... Uh, re- I mean, this I wouldn't have liked it anyway, but if they would have done the first round and then the second round, and then they would have said later on, okay, we're going to show you the Battle Royal that determined this, and then go into the semifinals and say, if you didn't watch the first round and all that, I still would think that it was dumb because it was like, well, now you determined the battle royal and did all that kind of stuff ahead of time but at least then i would make the excuse that maybe somebody planning this out was like well the battle royal is the fun thing we need to put that on the other part but it's the network they have no time limits so they could have done all of this just in order and it would have been you know perfectly fine and if nobody wanted to watch it at eight o'clock at night or something then they could have just watched it tomorrow or i'm pretty sure anybody who wants to watch it watches it anyway you know yeah, I find it weird that for a company that pushes their network when it comes to stuff like this, they don't often utilize their network in a practical sense. And with Mix Match Challenge, that's a deal that's specifically for Facebook Watch. But they didn't air this on the WWE Network, the first section of it. They aired it on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, WWE.com, and the WWE app. And I don't know if anybody else had the same problem I did, but... The WWE.com stream crapped out in the middle of Shane Thorne's entrance, and I was never able to get it to work again. I had to watch the whole rest of it on Facebook after that. So that already is like, if any of them should work, the WWE.com one is the one that should be the most trustworthy of the whole bunch. And that was the one that crapped out. By the yeah, way, if I anybody's interested, YouTube. you went to the YouTube one? Yeah, that would have been like yeah. my second best uh, guess, I would have thought. And if anybody's interested in the fact that I always point out that the um, the graphics department on the website is always dropping the ball, they waited until today to have a transparent graphic up. So the one that I made that's been circulating around the internet that I personally did 
five days ago. Yeah, you could have just fucking used that WWE. God damn it. Uh, How do you know they didn't? Because it's slightly, slightly different. It's uh, the bottom little parts of the um, uh, the globe wireframe thing are still black, and I made them all the uh, the gold color because I was like, this black thing looks really stupid. So unless they took mine and then they made it black, <laughs> they might have done that. But uh. this this whole thing is just so stupid to me because when it comes to something like you know, you're going to split the time frame up. I would think that it would make more sense to say, all right, at noon, we're going to do the battle Royal. And then if you want to watch what happens during the tournament, then tune in at eight and then they or tune in at seven. If they just were, you know, worried about the time, but it still it makes no sense to me that they didn't have the battle Royal or they didn't have the section, uh, the first part of this on the network to begin with. It's like, they didn't advertise this either. That was the first thing, uh, should be the first thing that was on WWE.com, and instead it was five savage tweets from Becky Lynch. Like, all right, well, you have to scroll down to see that you're doing a live event right now, kind of. That's a total mess when it comes to that. I already have yeah. it down on my list as one of the stupidest things that WWE's done this year. I'm not saying a lot. Uh, I'm sure by the end of the year it'll be well down on the list, but yeah, the structure of it was just lacking there was very little structure as far as like the matches themselves really cool to see some of these things like adam cole actually losing to tyler Bate. And... tyler Bate beating dijakovic was really like wow clearly they're aware that he's a big strong boy <laughs> yeah yeah I, I, I just completely agree with the sense that it was a very poorly structured and poorly advertised event, and if it doesn't get very good numbers, then they only have themselves to blame for it. Mm-hmm. But it was the the matches itself was fine. It kind of just evened out the sense of, well, I kind of already know what the results are going to be, and I'm just kind of here to watch the matches. So as long as you present all the matches, I'm not going to be too bothered in how you're going to do it. If you're going to do it in a really fucked up way, that's down to you. But I'll just sit back and watch them. I couldn't help but just get distracted about the airing of it because I mapped it out on the Mega Maniacs. It's, they aired, if you call it like, say, you know, the the qualifying Battle Royals Part A and Round 1 is Part B. And, you know, the first match of that's B1. They went B1, B2, B3, B5, B, uh, B1, 2, 3, 4, 5, C1, C2, C3... A, B6, C4, D1, D2, F. That's how they did this. And one of the things that bugged me about this uh, whole idea to begin with is with the Battle Royal, they made it to where the eliminations determined the bracket. And they did it in a way that I think is kind of counterproductive to how seeding works in tournaments. Now, I have done plenty of tournaments by now between Smart Madness, which is going to be coming up relatively soon and the champs giving and the sexy superstars tournament pretty sure i know how seeding works and the first person out of the battle royal was umberto carrillo then it was zach gibson and they were the the 15th and 14th ranked person so they fought each other in the first round shouldn't they have been fighting number two and number three because you rank high and low on brackets and stuff. Like, that's how that makes more sense, you know? Yeah. You know what you're doing. They clearly don't. Yeah. It's five bucks, WWE. You call me up and I go, nah, that's stupid. You do this. It's five bucks. Venmo it to me. And there you go. You got a consultant on your... Ugh. It's so ridiculous. I liked the Battle royal though. That was my favorite part of this whole thing. To all of the other promotions listening, you can have this man for five dollars. Five bucks, I'll give you consult uh, consultation work. And believe me, some of these companies need it because I click on some of these like in feds, and your websites are awful. <laughs> but <laughs> uh, I like the battle royal. I I really liked about it where um, 
Lee was eliminated by Dijakovic, and then everybody else ganged up on Dijakovic, because that's kind of how these things should work, you know? They're the two biggest guys, so they should sort of take each other out, kind of. And uh, I kind of like that they gave that to Jordan Devlin, too, because he wasn't going to win the whole entire thing. So if you win the Battle Royal and you lose the tournament, you still kind of got a little bit of a win. I mean, technically you didn't get a win, but that's a good way to kind of do that. And that probably was my favorite part about this whole thing. I liked some other stuff here and there. I'll bounce around and kind of do that. But Battle Royal-wise, what did you guys think? I thought it was good. You know, I, I'm a fan of Battle Royals because they're like the oldest gimmick match, and they're always fun. I thought uh, Adam Cole was trying to do the whole I will save myself bit, but he wasn't as obnoxious with it as some people. And I thought it was good. Uh, completely glossed over it, pretty much. It, the only thing I remember from the entire thing was the drop kick by Devlin that eliminated Drain. So all the rest of it is just a blur. The man from the UK does not like anything royal. You heard it here first. <laughs> it, it just, it just, um, it's, it's just a battle royal. It's just, it's just a battle royal. Yeah. But it didn't, it didn't stand out as anything particularly special. To be perfectly honest, none of the matches did stand out to me all that much. And I liked them, what I had seen. Some of them I kind of got a little bit tired, and I just sort of got myself distracted by doing some other things. Because apparently today Google decided to be all, like, fucking stupid. And I don't know if anybody else is having issues with, like, Google signing yourself out of your accounts and doing all this kind of stuff. But I've been dealing with that today. So it's a little <laughs> bit distracting. And, you know, when they put out, like... I've seen Gulak versus Andrews before. I wasn't really interested to watch it again, so it's just meh, whatever. And not the, I like the name the Gulak though. The Gulak might be my favorite finishing move name. Gulak's great. Uh, Keith Lee and Travis Banks. You know, it's I'm not the like biggest biggest Travis Banks fan of just being like this guy's great. Like it's like yeah, he's cool, but not gonna be super enthralled. And you put Adam Cole against Shane Thorne. I know who's going to win. It's because like, I know who's going to win with the spoilers, but I'm not really all that interested to see where Shane Thorne goes. TJP versus Dijakovic was the first one that I really paid like full-on attention to, and I liked that quite a bit. I liked seeing TJP playing the babyface. Uh, Baton Alexander was all right. Uh, it's like none of them were bad. That's the thing. But my favorite match probably out of the bunch... Uh, you know what? Yeah. I'd probably go Devlin versus Velveteen Dream. That's probably my favorite one. Not the best finisher, though. The Purple Rainmaker, that was kind of... Meh. I mean, I'm so biased towards Adam Cole that mine was Adam Cole versus Tyler Bate. But, yeah, I can see why you like Devlin versus Velveteen Dream. Uh, I was surprised by my one. My favorite one that well, the one that stood out the most to me was uh, Dijakovic versus uh, Tyler Bate. Yeah, that was a good one, too. Dijakovic was the MVP of the entire show for me. He was incredibly intense, was very powerful, his moveset. You could tell that he was paying, like, like looking to stand out as much as possible. He was selling his arm very well. That led throughout both the first match and then leading into the finish of the Tyler Bate match. Yeah, I thought he was there to make a name for himself, and I think he succeeded, even though he only had two matches to do it. I was still very curious that they put him in here to begin with, though, because if he was doing this whole kind of undefeated sort of thing, and then they have him lose to somebody like Tyler Bate, I mean, if he would have gone into the finals and lost, they still would have been a little bit kind of just been like, oh, wow, he actually lost, but he lost in the quarterfinals. Like, that's, you know, that's kind of interesting. And, and they did some interesting pairings here where... They did heel heel and face face and different things, so that was kind of fun seeing something different. Yeah, one of the most uh, well, one of the most fun matches was the um, Gulak Devlin match because they were both trying to just out cheat each other. Yeah, that's like, you're a cheater. Oh, I'm a cheater. Yeah. You're a cheater. That was cool. I like that. Yeah. Gulak was very funny on this show. Like, in the first match, uh, somebody from the crowd chanted that um, Gulak doesn't pay his taxes. Yeah, laughed at that. And so, like, yeah, what, said, what did he yell back? Uh, at he just said, uh, that's not true. <laughs> and then just continued. With it. But yeah, he was having a lot of fun. It was quite nice to hear a lot of interaction between the crowd and because it was, it's not like they weren't interested. It was just, it was a 
a um, small enough crowd that you could kind of hear individuals talking and what they were saying to the fans. You could also hear what the referees were saying a lot. You hear like so how um, I guess listless some of them are because I'm I, don't, I can't remember the match exactly, but I remember one of the referees when they were both standing on the turnbuckle just saying, "Come on, come on, get him off." <laughs> come on, come on! What are you doing? Come on, come on! Get like, him off the turnbuckle. Checking okay. his watch and just going yawning a little bit, like, oh, hey guys, let's wrap this up. <laughs> hey, why don't you do two quid farting around? <laughs> it had a like a nice little fun, just small indie feel about it. Even smaller than NXT, and for that matter. The reports that had gone around about Royal Rumble access were apparently that it wasn't all that filled up, so that explains why the crowd is so dark, too, because they don't really want to show that there's, like, you know, all these gaps of empty seats and stuff. But I think that this is still a good concept, and it's a shame that they crapped all over it, where they didn't advertise it ahead of time, and they botched all this whole, like, airing it in this weird kind of Star Wars split where it's like episode four, five, and six, and then one and two and three, and then seven and three and a half, and then, you know, whatever. I, I don't know why they necessarily did that. And I feel like they're going to look at this and they're going to go, well, that was a, you know, botch that we did that, so we shouldn't ever do that again. And it's like, no, this is this could be a cool, cool thing. You know, this could be like a bragging rights or like a Survivor Series for the, the minor leagues. And... I don't think it's going to work out all that well for them, which really sucks. Yeah, what are you going to do? I'm sure they'll try it again somewhere down the line, and it'll be better prepared. Yeah, I don't think it's the same as it would be on the main roster, where you kind of get one attempt to do this right, and if it goes wrong, then it's cancelled altogether. I think they'll recognise mistakes they made, they'll tweak it, and it will come back at some point. I don't know when, but I, I assume they'll do it again at some point because it's, it's a better concept than just doing a load of dark matches on a like a house show, essentially, that's surrounding a pay-per-view. And so, since they do have the whole idea of a, you know, a tournament leads to a championship match, that means that it's actually worth getting invested in, too. It's not just a series of matches for the sake of saying, this guy won the tournament and... He gets bragging rights for that, you know. I did find it quite funny that after the Tyler Tyler Bay Adam Cole match and Tyler Bay had won, they cut back to Charlie Caruso and she was they say, "Oh well, Tyler Bates challenge for the United Kingdom Championship, Pete Dunne's United Kingdom Championship, or maybe he'll go back to NXT and challenge for Tommaso Ciampa, and then or even face uh, Buddy Murphy for the Cruiserweight Championship, as if like." He's not going to face Buddy Murphy for the Cruiserweight Championship. <laughs> it's like, no, he wants to. He wants to fight for a real championship. He doesn't want to fight for the Cruiserweight Championship. That was a bit of a a bit of shade thrown by Charlie there. It does kind of seem like they they treat that stuff like that, where it's just kind of like you could do you could go to Raw or SmackDown or NXT, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> that kind of thing. Well, to be fair, like, most of the two, there was no two or five guys in the court in the semi-finals. There was only Humberto Carrillo and Drew Gulak in the quarterfinals. They were pretty. They were gotten rid of pretty quickly, as it, it seems. Yeah, they booked this almost as if they wanted to get that point across. And for that matter, Carrillo at this point, I'm writing him off entirely. I'm I'm done giving chances. This dude exists essentially for them to tout how great he is when he's coming out and then he loses and then that's the end of it i don't see anything in this guy anymore and it's not necessarily his fault but like he's supposed to be a big deal and i don't feel like the commentators even think that he is other than just reading a line about it they're like this guy's a great talent in the future he's they said a thing on the uh the velveteen dream match and uh i think it might have been vic joseph that had said it where he was like, we've seen Carrillo pull this off before when he gets to the top rope. And I was like, pull what off? He hasn't done anything like this. And twice while he tried to do that, Velveteen Dream stopped him. And then right in the second time he stopped him, he beat him. And it was like, we've seen him do this thing before that he hasn't ever done because he never wins a goddamn match. <laughs> oh, look at that. He failed twice. Oh, now he lost at the end. Like, Carrillo is... You might as well write him off as another person in the same range as Mojo Rawley and Mike Canellis and these guys that clearly aren't going anywhere. 
And it's kind of a shame because this dude maybe could have been something, you know? I see enough raw potential in him, but that's kind of all it is at the moment, just raw potential. He... I don't even see SmackDown potential in him. Uh, (laughs) What about velocity potential? He's going to be on the actual heat. He's going to go back in time. That's how it's going to work out. I I think he needs to slow down a little bit and be a bit more like structured in his approach to wrestling. He's obviously got a lot of athleticism and he's a good flippy wrestler, but I think the two matches that he had, they were very all over the place, really. As all over the place as this show was. So I think he's still got a bit to learn. He needs more personality, too. Right now, he's just a guy that comes out and smiles. Yeah, the only thing that separates him and then my grand myth leak is the fact that one of them's got a mask on. Yep. Well, one of them's probably way more talented. Oh, grand myth leak is way more talented than uh, Humberto oh. Carrillo. But a uh, couple weeks or a couple months down the line, what's going to be separating them is one of them's not going to be working for WWE anymore. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, yeah. I'll probably qualify that grand myth leak and Humberto Carrillo are about the same level. <laughs> but as soon as grand myth leak leaves, he gets on a much higher level than Humberto Carrillo. <laughs> And then Carrillo, I mean, he was Ultimo Ninja. For all we know, they could just say, hey, look at this. The next member of the two, uh, 205 Live Lucha House Party is Ultimo Ninja. Like, you know, just kind of replace him that way. Could be the case. <sighs> but there wasn't too many people that, like, had, like, like you say, that none of the matches were, like, mind-blowingly good. But there weren't any that were terrible. And... A few people stood out above all the other ones, like I've already mentioned. I thought Tyler Bay obviously had a very good showing. Bill Team Dream had a good showing, obviously winning it. Dijakovic was very good. I thought Gulak was a lot of fun. Devlin looks good for the matches that he had. There's a few people that you kind of look at and think, okay, these people are going to be big deals in the next couple of years or so in, in WWE or whatever area that they're representing. See, yeah. one of my big takeaways for this was it made me wish that more people had crossovers between these different shows. And we've had a couple things here and there, like Tyler Bate on, I think it was one episode of 205 Live. It might have been two, but he competed in the Cruiserweight division. And Mark Andrews has been on 205 Live before. We've seen Drew Gulak fight for the United Kingdom Championship and some different things here and there. But it kind of made me go, you know what? I want Tony Nese on NXT. He hasn't been doing anything in 205 Live. Put him on NXT. And Cedric Alexander, we were talking before, that he could be a good person to move to NXT. Velveteen Dream, I think he needs to stick with NXT, but you know, if they had some kind of a feud going on with him and somebody for NXT UK, pop him over there for a little bit for a short stint, you know? just I'd like to see more of a crossover between these types of things, and I'm kind of hoping that this carries over a little bit into the next TakeOver, too, where... You know, WrestleMania Access are going to be doing NXT UK. People are going to be involved and all that just to kind of keep people wrestling throughout the whole Access and all that. So maybe instead of just having the NXT UK people fight each other and doing that kind of a thing, maybe continue the Worlds Collide type of thing. Maybe have like a team type concept, you know? teams of NXT UK people against teams of NXT people or different stuff like that. I think that could be a lot of fun. So what you're saying is we can do this again at Survivor Series? Even that? uh, Yeah, you could do the 515 type thing with that and give people a little bit of a teaser with that. Do a triple threat. Fuck, that'd be great. Have... Five people from NXT UK and uh, five people from NXT and five people from 205 Live do a a triple threat elimination thing. That'd be awesome if you pick the right people, of course. Yeah, they'll pick uh, another clusterfuck. It could be, but it could be a fun clusterfuck. And they would, if it's one match, they can't air it out of order. (laughs) (laughs) Unless they go, we're going to start off this match with the third elimination (laughs) or something like that. Yeah, they they kick it off and like five people have already been eliminated and then ten minutes in, suddenly all fifteen people are back in the Yeah, <laughs> they could do that. 
Because that was the biggest botch of this whole thing was I think if they would have advertised this ahead of time, if they wouldn't have necessarily done spoilers, like, first off, what they could have done here, they could have just had on the YouTube page while this was going on, they could have just aired Royal Rumble Access and maybe kept people interested on Saturday and Sunday when they were doing that. That could have just been a case. They could have just done that. And I get that they maybe didn't want to do that because they wanted to air it on the network, but then they didn't air half of this on the network anyway. So if you were going to do that, at least just air the whole thing in order. And I just don't understand why they didn't do it that way. Yeah. Yeah, there's no reason for it. But like I say, I just can't, I can't muster up any sort of anger sure. towards them for it. Yeah, or care, really. That's probably the, the biggest thing. It's like, yeah. It's stupid, but kind of used to that with OWE every now and again. It's different when it's like it's the NXT people involved and stuff like that. You don't you don't expect this sort of production error to take place. But I'm really it's... hoping we get some kind of information of who decided to do this because I can't imagine that's the NXT crew. Uh, I think it'll probably come out at some point. Some people like some some news outlet will find out what the plan was for the structure. I, I don't see any excuse that would make it make sense. So maybe it doesn't really matter who came up with it, but you can only assume the Triple H signed off on it. So well, I'm going to do my best that the next time that they're doing like some, you know, press call thing, I'll try to get on it and they'll be like asking people to try to ask them questions about Brock Lesnar <laughs> against Seth Rollins or something. And I'll be like, uh, Anthony Mango here for a smart cap moment. Who the fuck decided to do the world's collide thing like that? <laughs> I'll be like, uh, what? <laughs> No, 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 I don't give a shit about WrestleMania. The point is, who did that thing? Cause and that is the first and last time Tony and Angle gets on <laughs> the NXT call. <laughs> and then they're like, uh, we're going to just send this phone call. And I'm like, smartcomeout.com. <laughs> <Like, just laughs> yeah, this was just one of those things that I wish would have been a lot better. And because of their tossing it all over the place and knowing the spoilers ahead of time and all that, I think that that just killed it for me. And it's a shame because I was really looking forward to checking out these matches because, I mean, obviously I knew that, for instance, Tyler Bate was going to beat Cedric Alexander, but it was like, I haven't seen those two fight in a while, if at all. So that'd be fun. And, you know, kind of interested to see what happens between Drew Gulak and Jordan Devlin because that hasn't happened before and some different things like that. So they kind of killed that for me and I'm annoyed about that. But... We know who is not the only the winner, but we also know what happens as a result of this. And this is where you might want to tune out a little bit, because I want to bring it up for the people that do want to know spoilers. So, earmuffs for about 10 seconds. Uh, Velveteen Dream uses this to cash in his shot against Johnny Gargano for the North American Championship. And if you want to know spoilers for that, you're going to have to go to smartcountmoment.com, because I'm not going to say that on the air. Uh, Ultimately, this does serve a purpose, and that's still a positive, so I'm still glad that they did this, as fucked up of a way that they did it, and I hope that they continue doing it in the future, just they don't do something that's ridiculous as this whole scheduling kind of conflict. Still gonna get a thumbs up, but it's one of those, like, it's a shaky thumb up, like, I don't know, I just saw a ghost and I'm scared and my finger is still shaking, that kind of a thing or something. It's like Michael J. Michael J. Fox giving a thumbs up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it is, but that's sad. <laughs> <laughs> Marty, we got to go back to the hospital. <laughs> uh, any other takeaways? Why, I don't know why I'm being mean. It's him, sorry. I don't know why I'm being so mean. It's like... Any other takeaways you guys got, positive or negative? Anybody stand out? Anybody that looked like a piece of shit out of this or, you know, cool move or something? Uh, Drew Gulak should be a bigger star. That's my takeaway. Yeah, Drew Gulak's a lot of fun. He should have been the uh, manager for the IOP or something like that. Oh, that would been so much better. He'd have been a much better role. Um, Tony Nice looks good. In a sense of, obviously, he looks good because he's, like abs are chiseled out of marble but in the sense that he actually got real heat i know he was facing double team dream so anyone that's going to be facing dream was going to get heat but he played it off pretty well and 
I'm 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 growing fonder and fonder of uh, Jordan Devlin every time I see him. I was a bit surprised. Something's that... off about him though. Is it the Finn Balor thing? Yeah, it might it might just be that, and that's so like uh, superficial of me. But it might just be that this guy looks like the knockoff Finn Balor that that gets under my skin or something. Like so in the, in, the, in the world of the great philosopher Daniel Bryan, it's fickle. Well, you know, do you ever go to like a dollar store or something, and you see like those knockoff toy things? Yeah, like uh, you know the uh, there's a an Instagram account, um, a bootleg something or other that I follow that's really funny. Where it'll be like a package, and it'll say like the Avengers, and there's Superman and Garfield and shit. <laughs> and it's like here's a you know clearly that they took like a Sonic the Hedgehog figure and they painted it all orange, and they call it like super fast gym or whatever. That's like kind of what Jordan Devlin seems like to me. It's like somebody tried to make Finn Balor in a creative wrestler thing, even though Finn Balor's already in the game. So that throws me off, but I like Jordan Devlin. I do think he's, he's good in the ring and all that. So, Hey, he had my favorite match of this whole thing. So that's another positive. I think if they, you know, give him a different haircut, dye his hair and maybe don't continuously reference Finn Balor for a while. And he'll be all right. And just a, a, another just final thing from me in terms of like the superstars. I'm surprised at how little they're doing with Keith Lee at the moment. Yeah, they really just slept on him. He came in and he could have been getting that Matt Riddle type of a push and instead he's just a normal dude. Yeah, and he doesn't have the... Well, he's, he's more up there in years than Matt Riddle is at the moment. So he doesn't have potentially the longevity that Riddle can have. Not saying that they're wrong to push Riddle over him because Riddle definitely has a lot of appeal to him and could be a huge star for the few, for a really long time. But there, there's something that they seem to be missing about Keith Lee. I don't, and I don't think it's size related or anything along those lines because they're not that fickle in NXT. But it's something about it's that it, there must be something about they're pushing too many people at the same time. And based on yeah. this, and based on this. Obviously, they've got Matt Riddle and Dijakovic. Dijakovic has a bit of a look about him that he wants it more at the moment, whereas Keith Lee maybe is given the impression that he's just happy to be there. Don't worry. If he's not being used on NXT from what we've seen, he'll go up to the main roster and be a main eventer instantly, <laughs> a la Elias or Alexa Bliss or Carmella. That gives me hope. It's maybe the case. Or maybe he just needs to turn heel. Because he's got a new theme song, and that comes off kind of heelish. Yeah, the Bask in My Glory thing isn't exactly endearing. Yeah, he kind of has that ego kind of thing going on. Also, he's bigger than basically everyone as well, so it's hard to present him as a babyface when he basically overpowers and outmatches anyone that he faces. Now, they haven't said anything about this on the tapings for NXT, so this is just jumping the gun and speculation, but we know that we're going to get two more sets of tapings before WrestleMania. So the current one that we just have, that's going to carry us into the end of February. And then we're going to get another thing a little bit later on after that. And then we're going to get another one in, uh, in March. I think it's like March 13th or something like that. So there's still plenty of time for them to do the dusty roads tag team classic. And if they do, I kind of would like to see Matt Riddle and Keith Lee be in the finals and then maybe do something out of that. Like maybe that's where Keith Lee turns. That's possible. I, I think we're more likely to see Keith Lee and Dijakovic as a team. Huh. I think, I think Matt Riddle's going straight for the, well, one of the, one of the champion singles championships. Totally a uh, spoiler as far as speculation goes, but I think it's going to be a fatal five way. I think the main championship is going to be Gargano, Ciampa, Ricochet, Adam Cole, and uh, Alistair Black. Yeah, that, that could be a potential. What about the Dream? North American That's... title. Yeah. Spoilers. Well, yeah, fuck it. <laughs> yeah. I haven't gone well, to I... at the moment now. <laughs> well, Thanks, if, you, if you're really paying attention, you'll know that even that's a little fucked up, so maybe not. Maybe, but uh, I yeah. uh, I'm not I'm not convinced that they they'll want to henpeck 
uh, Riddle into a tag team scene. I know they obviously want to put him onto the card, but I, I don't. I think that they have bigger plans for him. But the Keith Lee thing, I could make that could make total sense. Him being in the tag team, it doesn't necessarily have to be with Dijakovic, but it could be with uh, the finest Kona Reeves, obviously. Ooh, <laughs> he he just defeated him in a house show tonight in Lakeland, Florida. Yeah, so they just like they start building up a little bit of matches on the house shows. They build respect for each other, and then they form a tag team. It's like the perfect uh, story. Bro, I don't want to see Conor Reeves anywhere near a They could be <laughs> called Bask in My Glory Eve. Uh, End the show, Tony. All righty. Well, fuck it. That's the World's Collide Tournament. That's um, that's all you're getting. <laughs> Uh yeah, we were. We, this wasn't the best. Uh, it would have been a lot better if they would have done these guys their uh their just service because the guys themselves are entertaining. They just they didn't give them the the tools to succeed. And this isn't going to be the last pay per view point that you're getting for a little bit because we got another one coming up tomorrow because WWE just hates me and they want me to work more. Uh, tomorrow is going to be halftime heat. So I don't know when the hell that's going to happen and when the hell we're going to do our post show, but that is going to happen when it does happen. So stay tuned for that, everybody. I'm sure most people are going to be watching the Super Bowl anyway. But if you want to be aware of when we post this up on the channel, it will be on the YouTube channel when it's uh, available. That's kind of self-explanatory. Uh, <laughs> hit that subscribe button and ring that bell for the notifications. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter at SmartOutMoment. Follow the smartcamoma.com stuff as well, and you will be well aware of when these things go up, as well as the other things that are happening on the site. You know, we got the weekly articles, we got some random small packages every once in a while, and some other stuff that just pops up here and there. So that's something to be aware of. Also, uh, we've got the Patreon, if you want to throw in some of the spare change that you got to give us some ideas of some different things you'd like to do in the future. And we've got the red bubble and the T public shops for merchandise, the old smart place. And we've got fanboysanonymous.com for all the stuff that's happening there. I do my stuff on the wrestling news and bleacher report. Pay attention to those things. If you want to check out the outside interference material and the foreign objects or whatever the hell I call it. Now I'm losing track of my own gimmicks. And we've got, uh, next week, maybe nothing. I don't really know. It's kind of uh, up in the air a little bit. I haven't quite decided yet how we're going to do this, but normally the call the spot is what I had planned, and they might not necessarily have all of the teams for the Women's Championship match settled. And if that's not the case, then we might not be able to do it. So I might do one separate on my own and just kind of post it on the website. I might do a podcast on my own. I'm going to be out of town, so I can't really do that the same way as I normally would. But if you do the whole stuff that we were talking earlier about subscribing and all that, then you'll be aware of some of that stuff. But you might just get hot tags on Monday or you might get hot tags on Tuesday afternoon or something kind of crazy like that. So stay tuned. You know, you'll get whatever you get. I uh, think that that's all the plugs on my end that I can think of. But if I can think of anything else, I'll drop it in the comments. So just pass this over to these guys to give their plugs as well. Callum. You can find me on Twitter at Wigmeister14. Power rankings are live on Smart Cow Moment now, along with all the other weekly articles, as Tony said. So check those out. Uh, I'll give you one random position. Uh, tenth place is Johnny Gargano. You have to find out the other nine by checking out the article. So you should do them in, uh, by tenth place first, and then eighth place, and then twelfth, and then fifteenth, and then number one, and then twenty-eight. And No, because I'm not an asshole, Tony. <laughs> I, I, give the, I, give, I give the audience what they want which is there you go. the correct order and I'll just again plug if you haven't checked it out already 2001 Wrestling Odyssey the best thing about doing a retro podcast is it never goes out of date so I could literally just plug it in every single show and I will plug it on every single show until the next one comes out which will be sometime in February so if you enjoyed that one stay tuned another one will be coming up in the next well within the next month and bro. Okay, and for me, you can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Dude Felice. You can check out all of the weeklies, as both of these gentlemen have said, including the Triple Thread, which just went live on the website, which is a Royal Rumble review, 
I think there's also a new five moves of Doom up there. There's yeah, a primo from our new uh, Hannah who just joined the team. Yeah, there's a primo cologne uh, piece up there. Go check out smartgovernment.com. A lot of good things happening, as well as e wrestling news and wrestlezone.com. Tomorrow at about 3 p.m. Eastern, I'll be doing a watch along of halftime heat along with Kevin Kellum. And then I'll be back here doing the halftime heat 2019 with Tony. You can also be on the lookout for a new Lucha podcast coming to WrestleZone Radio, which I co hosted along with Angel Garcia. So be on the lookout for all that. Check out timekillerapparel.com. And that is it for me. That's it for all of us, everybody. Leave your comments below and tell us what you thought about Worlds Collide. If you watched it, if you didn't watch it, tell us why you didn't watch it. If you watched it in order, tell us how that was frustrating because you had to click around and go all over the place. And for that matter, tell us what your order of the Star Wars movies are. Should you watch it? Four, five, six, one, two, three, seven, uh, and then go back to Rogue One and all that. <laughs> Should you go one, two, three, Rogue One, and all that going forward? Where does Han Solo get into the mix? Any of that kind of stuff like that? Or are you just like me where you said, Last Jedi fucked it all up, and now I don't care anymore? <laughs> uh, alrighty, everybody, that's it for now. Stay tuned for Halftime Heat coming up tomorrow, and we will see you then. This has been another Smart Count moment, and we're being counted out. Welcome, everybody, to... No, I'm just kidding. <laughs>